Okay, here we are at part five. Derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse in terms of the specific angular momentum. And the reason why we're doing all of these because in part seven, we're going to solve some problems and some rocket problems. And we're going to solve also uh, an asteroid problem, an asteroid that's about to take out the Earth. And we're going to see, we got to determine if this asteroid is going to destroy Earth or is it going to pass by Earth. So we're going to use all these equations to do that. Okay, let's get started. Capital L is equal to angular momentum. So we're going to derive the lattice rectum of an ellipse in terms of the specific angular momentum. So capital L divided by the mass of the satellite is equal to the specific angular momentum. That's angular momentum per unit mass. Now I have the mass of satellite here because uh, because I'm using satellite, but whatever it is, the mass of a satellite or the mass of um, an asteroid, you know, or whatever, you know, you're, is orbiting on this uh, ellipse. So we're going to use mass of satellite. So now here's our ellipse. And we want the mechanical energy between points A and P. A is the apoapsis, as you remember we defined this as the furthest point from the mass that we're orbiting, and P is the periapsis, that's the closest point on the ellipse about the mass that we're orbiting, okay? So for our mechanical energy between points A and P, we've got one half the mass of the satellite times the velocity squared at A, And the velocity at A is perpendicular to the seven major axis, VA, minus G, the gravitational constant, times the mass of the satellite, times the mass of the planet that we're orbiting, divided by the distance between the mass that we're orbiting and our satellite at apoapsis, which is RA. And that's equal to the mass of the satellite times velocity at periapsis squared divided by 2 minus g times the mass of the satellite times the mass that we're orbiting divided by the distance between periapsis and the mass that we're orbiting, which is RP. Let's continue. So here's our previous equation. Now we'll solve for velocity at A. Cancel mass and multiply by 2. So we multiply it both sides of the equation by 2 and cancel the mass of the satellite because it's on both sides of the equation. So we have VA is VA squared is equal to VP squared plus 2G times M times 1 over RA minus 1 over RP. Now for the angular momentum. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation, energy equation. Angular momentum about M at A and P. That's what we want. So the angular momentum at A is mass of the satellite times the velocity of the satellite times the distance RA times the sine of beta. And that's equal to the mass of the satellite times the velocity of the satellite at periapsis times the distance RP times the sine of beta. At A and P, beta is equal to 90 degrees. Remember I said that VA and VP, the angle between the semi-major axis was 90 degrees. So that's sine beta. And sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So therefore, the mass MS times VARA is equal to MS times VPRP. Well, we can cancel out the MS, the mass of satellite, and we have the specific angular momentum 
at A and P. Or B A times R A. Equals B P times R P. And therefore, we solve for B P. And B P is equal to B A times R A divided by R P. And in our previous equation, energy equation, we have VP also. Okay? So, we can plug in. We plug in V and square it. So, VA squared is equal to VA squared plus RA squared divided by RP squared plus 2GM times 1 over RA minus 1 over RP. We solve for velocity at A. And since we got a velocity at A on the right side and the left side, we move that over to the left side and we factor out a velocity at A squared. We get common denominators, R squared or R sub P squared over R sub P squared. And then we add the numerators right there in red is equal to 2g times m times 1 over ra minus 1 over rp let's continue here's our previous equation and we see here that rp squared minus ra squared is equal to rp minus ra times rp plus ra so we plug that in right there right there okay And we divide through. Now we have a fraction on top and fractions on the bottom. Okay. So we got to find common denominators. Well, the common denominator on the top is RP sub P times 1 minus R sub A times 1 divided by RA times RP. And that's right there. Now we have two fractions, one on top, one on the bottom. We invert and multiply. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. We invert and multiply. We cancel out 1 RP minus 1 RA here and 1 RP here. And here's our final equation. Well, well next equation. Okay. RP plus RA is equal to 2A. Well, we have a 2 here. Okay, so we can bring this 2 down here. Let me show you. Here's our previous equation. So we, are, we rearrange terms and divide through by 2 here. And A is equal to RP plus RA divided by 2. GM is equal to mu. We're going to call it mu. Well, we take this 2 and make a fraction here. Okay. Because RP plus RA divided by 2 is the same as if that 2 was upset. Okay, but we say that is equal to A. So we have mu times R sub P times A times R sub A. But you remember our angular momentum at A is equal to, our specific angular momentum at A is equal to VA times RA. And we have here VA squared. So we multiply both sides of this equation by r squared a. Okay. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Well, r squared sub a, b squared sub a, that's equal to h squared. Okay. Because squaring both sides equals x squared. So x squared is equal to u times ra squared times rp divided by a times ra. Well, we cancel one of these ra's. And so now we have the specific angular momentum is equal to u times ra times rp divided by a. And it's squared. Okay. 
Now, we said previously that C, from the center of the ellipse to the focus, is C is equal to A times Z. And C is equal to the angle of, the, C is equal to the semi-major axis minus RP. Is also equal to semi-major axis minus RP. So C is equal to semi-major axis minus RP. And it's also equal to A times E. So if we square both sides, we get this. So A times, A squared times E squared is equal to, right here, is equal to A minus RP times A minus RP. It's the same thing as squared. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. So we square both, both terms. So a squared times z squared is equal to, square this out, a times a is a squared, a times r sub p, a times minus r sub p, minus r sub p times a is equal to minus 2a times r sub p, plus r sub p squared, minus times minus is plus r sub p squared. Okay, that's just algebra, okay? Then we move this a squared over to the left. That leaves minus 2a rp plus rp squared. We factor out a squared. And we factor out rp. Where rp plus ra is equal to 2a. You remember? ra plus rp is equal to 2a. Right? RP plus RA equals 2A. Well, we put that in here. Now we got a minus in front of that. So minus multiplied through there is equal to RP times minus RP minus RA plus RP. Well, RP and RP cancel. So that leaves us with RP times RA minus RA. And we have a minus on the left side, minus divided into minus is a plus. Okay. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Previous equation from two slides back, you remember? Our specific angular momentum squared is equal to U times RA times RP divided by A. Remember that? Now, let's plug in here. And we cancel 1A. A squared is equal to U times A times 1 minus Z squared. But guess what? B squared is equal to A squared minus A times Z squared. P is equal to A squared times A squared times E squared. Let's continue. And we factor out A squared and divide through by A. We get P is equal to A times 1 minus E squared. But our specific angular momentum is equal to A squared is equal to U times A times 1 minus E squared. That's equal to P. Our lattice, our lattice rectum. So we plug that in. And P is the lattice rectum and H is the specific angle of momentum. P is equal to H squared over mu. How about that? There we go. We've derived the lattice rectum of an ellipse in terms of the specific angular momentum. In part six of the next video, we will derive the eccentricity of an ellipse in terms of the specific angular momentum 
and the total energy. We will need these equations. Well, that's why we're deriving them. It's not magic. It's the law. Until next time.